But if you can't look and see the Anakin blowing up the Death Star. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? It doesn't make sense. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Hey. I just want to have a quick disclaimer about this video because this video is quite all over the place since I was talking about the Acolyte to begin with and then I started talking about the fandom of Star Wars itself. Let's get one thing straight. I don't hate anyone. I think we got enough hate in this world, especially in the online space and especially in pop culture today. I'm just giving my thoughts of what's happening currently in a general sense with Star Wars. So there are times I might say idiot or something like that. It's really... <laughs> It's really nothing personal. I'm mainly talking towards other YouTubers who are obviously milking a lot of content, which that's fine. If you're into the grind, that's all right. We're all trying to survive out here. And there is a quite a bit of swearing for those who don't like swearing. I'm just not going to censor it. I'm just being a bit real in this video. So if it's not your cup of tea, then that's fine. I understand. And for those who are obviously going to leave hateful comments or telling that I'm an idiot or I'm blind or a fence sitter, go on ahead. I don't care if you at me. Just don't go at anyone else who does love this stuff. They have enough shit to worry about in their personal lives. My day job is dealing with fools yelling at my face, telling me very wrong things and opinions about certain things. So you're no different than the Gumbies I have to deal with in my actual life. Without further ado, here's the video. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Buenos dias or buenas noches. It's your favorite Blanca Latino coming at you from your second monitor. And no, I didn't quit. I've been streaming the past month or so and there was really not much to talk about personally until a certain show is now creeping itself around the corner called The Accolade. By the way, don't be shy coming out in my streams. I do a lot of dumb shit, not intentionally to be honest. Shit just happens and I end up in these weird situations, especially in oblivion. Anyways, the acolyte. Oh boy, acolyte, acolyte, acolyte. It's starting to look even more cringe. The more they push out the advertisements or even show more clips, it just looks bad. And if you're excited for acolyte, that's fine. I'm not going to call you an idiot or something like that. If it's your cup of tea, fine. Me, on the other hand, I think it's cringe. I think it's a bit much. And I think the lightsaber whip is definitely pushing it. And yes, I know it exists in Legends, but even when I found out about that, that's still pretty bad. It's just, to me, it's cringe. I mean, this show takes place in the last years of the High Republic era, which is considered to be the golden age of the Jedi, where everything's a lot more accepting whatever that means. Since The Acolytes being the first show ever to be set in the High Republic era, who knows if we're going to get more projects taking place in the High Republic era. We know video games have touched upon it, Jedi Survivor. Even though I love that game, the High Republic stuff was very dull. They showed glimpses of it in flashbacks and it just, it just wasn't interesting. I feel like they dropped the ball with Dagon just so that Bode can get the spotlight when it comes to villain status, I guess. Which I don't mind, because Bode is probably one of the best characters to be ever introduced in Star Wars. Villain-wise, to be exact. Since villains these days are just not great, and they always make them very sympathetic to the point that they always get redeemed, and it just becomes very repetitive. I'm mainly talking about in a general sense when it comes to films, and mainly films to be honest. I don't think TV shows demonstrates that too much, but I do like to have a variety of villains. Sometimes it's good to have a bad guy just being evil. <laughs> That's why the High Evolutionary was such a great villain in Guardians 3. But I doubt that the Acolyte will have a villain like that. Even though they tease this weird Sith Lord wearing a helmet similar to Kylo Ren with a big old grin on their face. Wow, could you not be any more tryhard? Like seriously, what is this? Is this the Batman who laughs? <laughs> what is this? It's supposed to be, what are you? What do you mean? The dude in a mask. It's probably not going to be alien as usual since Disney Star Wars just refused to have prominent alien characters with the exception of Ahsoka. But are we going to get another Star Wars project that will get a main alien character? Highly doubt it. Even the video games do it too. Star Wars Outlaws should have given us a choice to be an alien 
or human or just a customized character. I know some of you are gonna go, ah, oh, you're just hating on Acolyte. You're not excited at all. You're just hating for the sake of hating. Can you blame me? From disappointment after disappointment after disappointment, we've been getting really bad content from Disney Plus with all these Star Wars shows, with the exception of Andor, but I doubt we're gonna get something that good ever again. So it's safe to say that a lot of old school fans are at the state of apathy. That's where I'm at with the Acolyte. I feel nothing for Acolyte. The only two things I'm excited about is Daphne King's character because she's a prominent alien character. I like her design and I like to see how the Wookiee fights with his lightsaber and I'm looking forward to that Sith murdering everyone at the end because like Keanu Mundi says, Impossible. The Sith have been extinct for a millennium. So as soon as everyone sees that Sith Lord, they're dead. That Sith should just slaughter every single one of them. If they pull that off, I will tip my hat to them. Yeah, so a lot happened since I recorded that part of the video and I'm keeping in there because my thoughts on the Acolyte still stands right now that my expectations are really low with the show and I doubt Leslie Hedlund can pull it off. And I know I have read that she has been a bit scared and a bit nervous because of how the Star Wars fandom is like. And it's basically a fact with all fandoms. We all have our good side. We also have our dark side. We can be assholes. Believe me, I can be like that too. I'm mostly like that at work. But then they're talking about the racist and all the sexist people. And I understand there are people like that out there. But they're just a small minority of bad apples. But unfortunately, Kathleen Kennedy and Leslie Headland are focusing on that group. And I guess I could say the opposite side from, I guess, the anti-woke people have the same ideals as well. That they focus on that minority of people with the loudest voices. Because after all this, it's basically two sides of the same coin. You got one side shouting woke, woke this, woke that, women this, oh there's a women in this show or oh, game, it is woke. Then you got the opposite side going, you racist pig, oh my god, don't you respect women, all this nonsense and it's just becoming white noise to me. And I have seen videos on both sides because I want to see both point of views and I understand that come on. It gets to the point where I can't take you seriously when you start name calling other people, calling them freaks, calling them bigots, all this crap. For example, prime example, Leslie Hendland being the former personal assistant of Harvey Weinstein. How many times do we have to bring that up? It does not benefit the show. Yes, it is a fact that she is an assistant to Harvey Weinstein, and I'm pretty sure she's gonna have to live with that for the rest of her life. And plus, I don't fucking care. Is the show good or not? Her being the personal assistant of some disgusting human being has nothing to do with the show. Criticize the show for what it is. Criticize if it follows canon, which I'm pretty sure it's not going to do it. Criticize the acting, the visual effects, the writing. Yeah, we can make fun of people miswording certain events that happen like Anakin blow up the Death Star. That's pretty fucking hilarious. We can have a joke with some of the cringy stuff that some of the actors say. But for God's sakes, really? Are we gonna start name calling them to the point it becomes a joke too far because what I've learned throughout my time especially during my day job is that not everyone has thick skin and so you definitely have to tiptoe your way around wording certain things to people basically as Patrick Swayze says in Roadhouse be nice be nice it's not that fucking hard. If you want to make your point across, you gotta be nice about it so that people can hear your criticisms loud and clear without being an asshole. Unless those guys spit you in the face and also disrespect you, then you can be an asshole. But that's if they started it. I want you to be nice until it's time to not be nice. And it's fine to shit talk among friends. Even with some edgy jokes, it makes sense if you're among friends. It's fine. Just don't say things to someone that you don't know. I mean, that's how I go, personally. I mean, we can make all the gross jokes I hear about Leslie Headland, which I don't want to say in this video personally, but it's not really a joke, it's more of an insult, which fine, you know, if that's what floats your boat, if that's what you find funny, okay. It just reminds me of my friend Jarvis saying the most dumbest shit possible, but what I'm trying to say is that the fandom or pop culture in general is divided. It just seems like an endless tug of war. And calling us men bigots 
in a general sense, doesn't help either. It just makes you look like an idiot. Same with people pointing out everything woke makes you look like a complete Gumby. Synthetic man's a perfect example. He's quite the nutcase. Because his kid is mixed race, so his black wife divorced him, and now he plays fucking birthday parties. How blackpilling is that? So in a way, you could almost say this is anti-propaganda, but I still think it's promoting race mixing. But but if a modern Marxist rewrote history and added diversity everywhere, we find out her soon-to-be husband is actually a white guy and not ugly. Who fucking cares? And I don't give a fuck what you say in the comments if you're gonna defend him. You'll just remind me of the other idiot I had to deal with in my day job. So don't even bother. He can have his opinions about everything being woke. I can have my opinions about how silly people can be in the internet. That's the point. We all have opinions. We can give each other shit without being fucking assholes about it. But assholes do exist. So you just gotta learn how to deal with them too. But not everything is black and white. And I know that some people hate it when it comes to the grayness of things in life, but that's how it is. Not everything as it's simple as it can be. Hate to break it to you. I bet you people are wondering, what's your politics? I don't fucking care. I don't fucking care about politics at all. If a writer sneaks in something of a project and if it's done subtly well, then yeah, I don't mind. If it's executed well and not so preachy like I've seen in some movies, then I can agree with you and go, okay, this is a bit much. You could have done it differently in a way that everyone can agree with you. I like to have some good character writing and comp complex stories because having big guy blow shit up and kill bad guy doesn't do it for me anymore. Yeah, it's a good watch. Maybe, you know, if I'm drawing, but other than that, that that doesn't do it for me anymore. I need more depth. I need I need more from it. But that's my taste. You know, some people like romance. Well, actually, I like romance myself, which I do believe Star Wars is heavily lacking and Jedi Survivor shows that Star Wars needs romance again. But yeah, when people say, oh, people want this, people want that, uh, no, that's what you want. And I know the general public probably wants a simple story, I guess. I want something more in depth, and I doubt we're gonna get that in Star Wars. Andor was the only show that pulled it off, but unfortunately, nobody watched it. And in my opinion, it's the best Star Wars show to ever come out in Disney+. Plus. There's nothing that can compare that who knows, maybe Acolyte could be up that level with Andor. Some people say it's Andor with lightsabers, and I go, oh, okay, I'll take your opinion with a grain of salt at the meantime. Because we also have the media twisting things around. They don't help either, because they're the ones pissing everyone off when it comes to their stupid headlines to upset, I guess, different kinds of Star Wars fans. And you can't say they're the racist ones being pissed off, because it could be just a person that loves Star Wars who hates being accused on being part of that group of people, just because they don't like a certain type of character or any kind of criticism towards Disney Star Wars new products because other people, even headliners, would say, oh, you're just a racist. And all the, all the names, all the buzzwords from that side. But again, that's how journalism works. It's always about manipulating the audience into something that isn't there. Like how they quote, like how they describe characters from the Acolyte, one of them being a leader of the witch clan and they just had to put in that she's lesbian. Who fucking cares? Her being lesbian would not make her a good character. If she's a shit character in the show, it's not because she's a lesbian. It's because she's a shit character. But we'll see when the show comes out. But like I said, journalism starts fires. And so do people on the internet. All of those YouTubers that would make daily content about all these kinds of situations, I guess. My best advice to give you is to take it with a grain of salt. Listen to their opinion, but don't make it a fact. It's what they believe. In, and it's how they feel f towards that subject. Believe me, I was in that hole myself and I was angry towards whatever they post. <laughs> And then I realized, man, this just wasn't healthy for me. I got better things to do in my life. I just want to enjoy my life as it is. Have a good time. If there are dumb shit happening in media, I would have a laugh at it and move on. And go enjoy something else that's better. But also, I do put on those kinds of videos to, I guess, fill out the time when I'm sketching on my iPad. Because it's still interesting to see how they can keep up with the content, man. Holy cow. I mean, no offense to them. Good on them for the grind. I would never disrespect them for that bit. 
Damn. I mean, that's the privilege of being full-time YouTube, I guess. And most of the time, I might disagree with them. But if you're also just monitoring of people being racist and sexist because they're cracking a few jokes among each other. What are you doing? Seriously, just continue on with your content. Create something so that your audience can enjoy. But I guess it depends what your audience likes. See, it's like I said again, there's a lot of grayness towards all of this and that's fine. Nothing's as black and white. <laughs> Life's strange like that, my friend. So yeah, I can talk about how cringe the acolyte looks, how cheap, how cheap the costumes look, how ridiculous the budget is. How is it more expensive than Kenobi? I have no clue because the show does not look good. And the Kung Fu martial arts stuff is cringe. The lightsaber whip is cringe. And the actor saying dumb stuff is also pretty cringe and funny at the same time. But the thing is, I still haven't watched the show, so I can't really judge it before watching it, saying I can give my first impression so far, but for all I know, the show could be good. It could be the fault of the marketing, could be the fault of the actors, but who knows? It could be good, but my expectations are zero. And saying that it's made by the personal assistant of Harvey Weinstein, just just shut the fuck up and sit down. If that's the reason you don't want to watch it, fine, go. No one's gonna stop you. All right, that's fine. I'm watching it because it's going to be content for my channel, and maybe it might be surprised. Who knows? And the people doing the show face and their reactions. Anakin, Anakin, oh, Anakin! What? What? One is never too old to learn, Snips. Baby, go, baby, it's so good. Go, 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 go. Wow! <laughs> I can understand why they're excited for a certain thing to happen in a Star Wars show, or even anything pop culture related, because it's stuff that we grew up watching or reading from a comic book and seeing it in the big screen or seeing something happen that we can only dream of happening. And here it is. So I get why people get excited and freak out. And, and, but sometimes you guys do it a bit too much to the point that it does seem like you definitely want Lucasfilm to uh, give you some free stuff and early access. Yeah, I would say just tone it down a bit, personally. Personally, that, that's my opinion. How would I know this? Because I actually used to do some reaction videos in my older channels, but you won't see them because they're private. But I totally understand when it comes to doing reactions, you overdo it. And yeah, you get excited, but yeah, I can tell when someone's really overdoing it and trying way too hard. That's when I go, okay, you're definitely doing it for the thumbnails and that's fine. It's whatever, you know, if it gets you views, it gets you views. You're grinding out here just like I am. And you're probably want something or early access from a corporation. If that's how you want it, okay. Bloody Pokemon shiny hunters have more authentic reactions than these people and most of them don't even show their faces you can just tell it through their voice but at the end the star wars fandom has become cringe in both sides and it just feels like a never ending just man this culture war stuff is really <laughs> it's really doing my head in and i'm a guy who don't doesn't care about politics i don't have personal politics i just care about watching my nerdy stuff playing my games sketching my art well, and also my thumbnails and living my days and hopefully try to get out of my day job because every day it's starting to feel like it's not safe doing my day job now, especially here in Australia. But really, I feel like we should just lock up everyone who has beef with each other and just have them sit down and talk. Just have an agreement or agree to disagree without the fucking insults. But that's not gonna happen because people are stubborn. And I understand. I'm stubborn myself as well. And I know this video is a bit messy, but that's how it is. <laughs> Because not only I wanted to talk about the Acolyte, I wanted to talk about the Star Wars fandom in general. And I feel like Star Wars Theory is the only level-headed person dealing with this situation. Because I agree with him. We just want good Star Wars story. A good story that hopefully respects the vision that George Lucas had for the franchise. Yeah, I know he made the prequels, but not everyone's perfect. And I wish that Star Wars could grow up just like how they did with Andor. But it seems like we're not gonna get it, but I don't know, the Acolyte gives that sort of tone. But I only care about watching Je Jackie? Jackie, I think that's the alien girl's name, played by Daphne King. She's the other one that I'm 
only interested in watching in that show. Everything else looks doo-doo, but those are my first impressions at the moment for the Acolyte. And I'm pretty sure people are trying to figure me out, is this guy left or right leaning? And I'm going, nope, I'm just messing around with you guys, giving you my thoughts on about everyone in the fandom. And to me, I learned that it's best to actually listen and try to understand other people's point of view. And maybe you get a better idea of perspective from others instead of being very narrow-minded about everything. I had to learn that the hard way and I'm still learning at this moment. And I'm willing to try to chat with some people to fully understand where they're coming from. But also Lucasfilm needs to understand that they need to please at least everyone don't forget your old fans, Lucasfilm. I do agree. Get Kathleen Kennedy out of there. She She's horrible. She's been just making bad decision after bad decision. Just get her out of here. It's not a sexist thing. She just sucks at her job. Just give it to someone who's more competent because it's truly sad to see what Star Wars has become. Yeah, you're pleasing a certain minority of groups, but you need to please the general. Even though I want Star Wars to be in a certain way, I can admit I'm in the minority in that part of the fandom as well. So you're just gonna have to please the general audience, but Lucasfilm is failing that, and now Star Wars is not, it's nothing special anymore because they keep pumping out the sludge, they keep pumping out content. It's just, that's what it is. It's just a yearly thing for Star Wars. Star Wars used to be special every few years, and now look, look what happened. It's just a franchise destroyed and forgotten. I'm done.